Okay, so craving, craving for God. Yeah, I love I love that expression, craving for mm. God. Uh, and mm. I think addiction, you know, <coughs> addiction is such a such a strong pull. And and in addiction, you could say one is looking for God, but looking in the wrong places for God. Mm. Um, and addicts are looking for something outside of themselves to fill the the spiritual hole. And there is a craving, but that, cra you know, the ego is so tenacious. You know, the last place the ego wants to look is in its death to find God. It doesn't want to look for its mm. death to find God. I mean, it's going to go, look out there. Mm. And there'll be karmic tendencies into which addiction tends to be fixated on first, you know, depending if you can look in the past lives. You probably find out why it's food or alcohol or why it's drugs or wh why it's uh, whatever it is. So, um, but it doesn't really matter which addiction, because each of them can take you to the same place. It doesn't really matter. But craving for God. So the ego has a craving. And when the ego is inflated, of course, it's going to project, be projected outwards. The ego is never going to go like, I, I, need to, I need to be dissolved, and then you'll be free. The ego is always going to go like, be a bit thinner, eat that food, uh, get that girl, be more successful, or, or whatever it is. So that craving, um, and I think, you know, it's, I think Hawkins calls it, it's a bit, I think he doesn't maybe say it, but I take it as like the house of illusions. You keep looking after one illusion is going to fill the hole, then the next illusion, then the next illusion out there. And of course, the miracle, all the false gods out there in the world are going to fix this craving. So the craving get because the ego is projecting outwards. The ego is never going to tell you, look, if you, if you kill me, you'll be happy. It's never going to say that. So it's going to be always like, but you always find, and especially if you're an addict, when it takes you right to hell, then you start to lose faith. You know, like all people coming to 12-step fellowships, it's like they've tried their addiction and it's no longer working and nothing's working. So, so then, you know, that sort of, the ego's calamity is God's opportunity. And that's often the time for an awakening to finding God instead of that. And there can also be karmic karmic influences, you know, as to, as to what, uh, why um, an addict does that. So ultimately, yes, you could say this, you know, they say, um, I mean, and, you know, but I, I like Buddha, and Buddha sort of summarizes it, you know, like it, what, if you have an ego, you're always going to be in a cycle of old age, suffering and death over and over again, lifetime after lifetime. And the only way you can get free of this drama is enlightenment. You know, where you find that, you know, as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Before the ego, before the ego and its searching outwards for a fix to the soul sickness, is, is the thing I'm really looking for, is that inner peace. It's not found in chasing outside things. So. That's the place where it eventually gets um, the, the, the thirst. You know, the thirst, I'd say, in normal people is not thirsty usually enough. Um, so, I mean, I don't really mean, to, I'm sort of talking generalities, but normal people are not in much pain. So, you know, are they going to sort of pray their asses off and meditate and be mindful to, you know, at such a deep level that they're going to dissolve their ego? Probably not. Some of them might be. You know, if you've been like a monk, a Buddhist monk for the last eight lifetimes, and you get born in this lifetime, there might be, even though you're not an addict, there might be a natural inclination, a strong maturity and a strong karmic trait within the person just to go to Zen monastery and just, and just do and get enlightened. But most of us are going to be in horrific pain and are then are going to like put in the work like a normal person who's not in much pain and is watching football all the time, you say, like, you know, do what, you know, find God, you know, what's, what's the motivation to do that? So, um, so, yeah, ultimately, for me, like Hawkins said, I mean, this is, this is per you know, I think Jesus and Hawkins agree, it's purgatory. This is purgatory. So this is a place, it's not a holiday, I don't think this is a holiday camp, personally. I, don't, I agree with Buddha. Buddha and Jesus, like Jesus was sort of saying, uh, like, take me as your saviour and I'll, I'll make sure you get a ticket to heaven, you don't have to come back here. 
and Buddha is sort of saying like, this is old age suffering death, I recommend enlightenment, you know, so I don't think either of them were sort of recommending trying to make a holiday camp from this place. Um, so, um, so the crate, so it's, the soul is incarnating in this world to learn lessons to, for spiritual purification, either to get to the next realm, heaven, or enlightenment, or you know, a few rare ones want to be avatars and keep coming back and clearing global karma. Uh, that's something totally different, but that's very few who, 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 who want to do that. Um, so I, I really like the course and Hawkins, you know, this, this craving, craving for God. Ultimately, for me, that's, you know, if, you, if you're not going to crave God enough to get to heaven or enlightenment, then you're probably going to come back here. You sort of choose this as your holiday camp to, to reincarnate in. Uh, and, um, you know, that's, that's okay for the individual soul to, to choose that. And, I mean, God isn't, I sort of think like God's a gentleman. If you want to keep coming back here and staying here, so you can stay here for infinite lifetimes. It's up to the individual soul. Um, 